Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm excited to share with you all that I have learned in my introduction to multimedia course this past semester. From the power of social media to the art of storytelling, let's dive into some key insights and my personal takeaways. First off, let's talk about social media. You might be thinking, I'm a computer science student, why do I need to know about social media? Well, let me tell you, it's super important. Social media is a big playground for techies, it's where all the cool new stuff happens. From figuring out how Facebook knows what has to show you, to making an app that could be the next big thing on Instagram, social media is at the heart of it. For someone like me, who is into competing, understanding social media means I can create better apps, protect people's privacy better, and maybe even start my own tech company one day. Plus, it's a great way to connect with people, share your tech projects, and get feedback. Pretty cool, right? Next up, let's talk about something really cool called transmedia franchises. This is when a story doesn't just stay in a book or a movie, but spreads out to things like video games, websites, and especially social media. Imagine getting to follow your favorite story through different places, like seeing updates from characters on Twitter, finding secret clues on Instagram, or joining fun challenges on TikTok. Social media makes the story come alive in new ways, letting fans be part of it all. Instead of just watching or reading, people get to join in and help tell the story too. It's like the story is everywhere and everyone can dive in from their own screen. This makes stories more exciting, brings fans together, showing just how storytelling can grow and bring us all into the adventure. Next, I want to talk about someone who really stands out on social media, David Lade. Following David's journey has been a game changer for me. He's not just a fitness guru, he's a storyteller. Sharing his journey from being just another guy into becoming a symbol of transformation and dedication. What makes David so inspiring isn't just the impressive workouts or the nutrition tips, it's his ability to connect with us on a personal level. Through his posts and videos, he opens up about the struggles and the hard work and the dedication it takes to achieve your goals. Watching him, you learn that the success isn't overnight, it's about consistency, pushing your limits and staying true to your journey. David teaches us that it's okay to have tough days, as long as you get back up and keep going. His influence goes beyond fitness. It's about building a mindset that can tackle any life challenges. Following him, I have learned that with the right attitude, dedication and hard work, transforming any aspect of your life is possible. He's more than just an influencer, he's a motivator showing us the power of sharing authentic experiences and the impact it can have on others. Now let's dive into something super important in social media content creation, the narrative arc. Think of it as a story of journey, with a beginning, middle and end. When you are scrolling through social media, you're not just looking at random posts, you're following stories. The narrative arc starts with grabbing your attention, maybe with a catchy opening or a surprising fact, something that makes you stop and wants to know more. And in the middle, it builds up sharing experiences, challenges or behind the scenes glimpses keeping you hooked and wanting to see how it all turns out. And finally, the end it wraps everything up with satisfying conclusion, maybe lesson learned or a big reveal. Applying this to social media means creating content that takes people on a journey, making them feel a part or something bigger. It's about turning simple posts into engaging stories that resonate, connect and leave a lasting impression. Whether it's a fitness transformation, a travel adventure or even the day in a life, Using a narrative arc makes content more engaging, memorable, and shareable. It's not just about what you're telling, it's about how you take your audience along for the ride, making every post a chapter into an ongoing story that they can't wait to follow. Now let's talk about visual storytelling basics. Visual storytelling is like painting a picture with your posts and videos, where every color, light, and shadow tells part of a story. It's about showing not just telling, the basics start with using images and videos that catch the eye and make people feel something. Whether it's a breathtaking sunrise that makes you feel hopeful, a close-up of hands working on a craft that shows dedication, or a funny face that makes you laugh, each visual has the power to convey emotions and message without a single word. Good visual storytelling also uses compositions of how things are placed in your shot to guide the viewer's eye to what's important. Don't forget about the color, it can set the mood from warm tones for happy moments to cool shades for sad or mysterious ones. By mixing these elements just right, you create not just content but an experience that sticks with people. It's about making your audience see what you see, 
feel what you feel and connect with your story on a deeper level. Now let's chat about something super cool, growing your creative confidence. Cough it like planting a seed and watching it grow. Every day, take a little time to do something creative. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's more like playing. Maybe doodle, write a story or snap a fun photo. Then when you mess up and you will don't sweat it. Those oops moment, they're actually good. They help you learn and get better. Also keep your eyes open for things that spark ideas. Could be anything, a funny show, a song, a walk in a park or chat with a friend. All this stuff can light up your imagination. And here's one big thing, share what you make with others. It might feel scary, but it's a great way to learn and get braver. Remember, being creative isn't about being the best. It's about finding your own special way to see and share the world. So let's keep trying new things, having fun with it, and watch how our creative muscle gets stronger. Right, let's talk about visual editorial storytelling. Imagine telling a story, but instead of using a lot of words, you use pictures and videos that grab people's attention and won't let go. Here's how you do it. Start with a clear idea of the story you want to tell. What's the big message? Next, think about the images and videos that show your story best. It's like picking the right ingredients for a recipe. Each picture should add something yummy to the mix. Then put them in an order that makes sense, like setting up dominoes. When someone looks at them, they should be able to follow the story from start to finish, feeling all the highs and lows. And don't forget the details, close-up shots can show emotions or important bits. Big picture might miss. Lastly, mix in some words to guide your audience through the story. Breadcrumbs leading the way. Doing all this lets you tell powerful stories that can make people laugh, cry, or jump into action, all without saying a word. So grab your camera and let's start telling stories that stick with people long after they've seen them. Alright, let's dive into the world of podcast interviews, a place where stories come to life through conversation. Here's the scoop. The heart of a great podcast interview lies in listening. Yes, asking smart questions is key, but really listening to what your guest says can lead to unexpected and fascinating places. It's like being a detective, but instead of solving mystery, you're uncovering cool stories. Next up, do your homework. Knowing a bit about the person you're chatting with can make a lot of difference. It shows respect and can turn a good talk into a great one because it's like talking to a friend, not a stranger. Also, keep it real and relaxed. When you are comfortable, your guests will be too, and that's when the magic happens. They will share more, laugh more, and open up. And remember, it's not just about the answers, it's about the stories behind those answers. Those are the gold nuggets that make your podcast shine. So gear up, dive in, and let's make some podcast magic happen. In making videos, it's important to get a few things right to look and sound professional. First, make sure your camera doesn't shake. Use something like tripod to keep it steady. Good light is a must, it makes everything look better. Make sure people can hear you clearly. So using a good microphone is a must. When you're editing, cut out the boring bits to keep things interesting. A little music or sound effects can make your video more fun, but don't go overboard. And don't forget about color. Fixing up your colors can make your video pop and look really polished. Putting all these pieces together make your video not just nice to watch but it shows you put in the effort to making something great. Now let's talk about the specific technical skills I acquired from the course. In this adventure I got really good at putting articles on website, which was pretty cool. I started by learning how to use a website maker called WordPress. It's like a tool that lets you build your own part of the internet. I figured out how to make words look nice on the page adding headlines and lists, and putting in pictures here and there to make everything more fun to look at. I also learned how to link clicks and how to make sure people could find my article when they search online. This meant picking the right words that people might search for and putting them in my article. And that's for it today. We talked about a bunch of cool stuff from sharing stories online to learning new tricks and how to make our stuff look and sound good. It's been an awesome sharing all of these with you. I'm super thankful for all of your support. Everyone like, share and comment will help us learn and grow together.